Hey everyone. Today we are going to secure infrastructure with Azure capabilities. We all know what infrastructure is. It comprises the hardware, software, your services, your microservices, networking infrastructure and facilities required to support IT services for an organization. And if we talk about zero trust, zero trust infrastructure solutions assess it, monitor it, and prevent security threats to the services which comprises the infrastructure. So it's been a while, so let's put the zero trust in perspective again as compared to infrastructure. Well, we have the basic principles that we need to follow. So zero trust infrastructure Solutions support the principle of zero trust by ensuring that access to the infrastructure resources is verified explicitly. That's the principle number one. Access is granted using a principle of least privilege. That's our second principle. And mechanisms are in place that assume breach and look for and remediate security threats in the infrastructure. That's our principle number three. We need to understand the criticality of infrastructure first before we go ahead and start uh, talking about the Azure capabilities to secure it. So cloud infrastructure is becoming an essential piece for many businesses which are opting for cloud or using it for development maybe, or maybe it's hybrid for them. But if they have their cloud infrastructure in place, that's the point. So it's critical to ensure that people and processes have only the rights they need to get their job done. Assigning incorrect access can result in data loss, data leakage, or unavailability of the services because it could be deleted, right? System administration administrators can be responsible for a large number of users, systems, and permission sets. So correctly granting access can quickly become unmanageable and can lead to a one size fit all approach. I have seen in past, like six or seven years back, it was owner and contributor rights were everywhere, whether they need it or they don't, but it was there. People were assigning that to everyone. This approach can reduce the complexity for administration, that was the reason it was happening, but it makes it far uh, easier to unconsciously grant more uh, permissive access than required. Hence, we need tools and centralized mechanism to achieve least privilege. So let's go through some of the Azure capabilities and the things that we should have here. So as you see, the very first is our back since we were talking about the providing or giving permissions. So RBAC stands for role-based access control, which offers slightly different approach. Roles are defined as collections of access permissions. Security principles are mapped to roles directly or through group membership. Well, it is always recommended to use group for the permissions though. Separating security principle, access permission, and resources provide simplified access management and more detailed control. On Azure, users, groups, and roles are stored in Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory is the centralized management uh, resource or service provided by Azure. This RBAC, you need not to do anything, it's in build there and will help you to achieve least privilege. And also there are like thousands of inbuilt roles, but you can also customize as per your need. Now, the second point is hierarchical structure. Why hierarchical structure? Because it is actually for the management. We have management groups at the top, which can go up to six level deep. Then we have uh, subscriptions and inside the subscription, we can create resources under the resource group. And 
it goes this way management group subscription resource group and resources so permission supplied the top can inherit we know roles are sets of permissions like read only or contributor that users can be granted to access an azure service instance roles can be granted the level of an individual service instance but they also flow down the azure resource manager hierarchy it could be applied to management groups. It wasn't there earlier, but now it is. So management groups add the ability to group subscriptions together and apply policies at even higher level. So it's not only about our back, you can have policies applied there for the governance purposes and control your environment. And the ability to flow roles through, through an arbitrary defined subscription. Hierarchy also allows administrators to grant temporary access to an entire environment for authenticated users. For example, an auditor might require temporary read-only access to all subscriptions. Now, providing identities to services, how, how actually this works. Well, it's uh, often valuable for services to have identities. Often uh, credential information is embedded in the configuration files with no security around these config files. Anyone with access to the system or repositories can access these credentials and risk exposure. Azure AD addresses this problem through two methods, service principle and managed identities for Azure services. Managed identities is always preferred over service principle because service principle is again, user ID and password, but managed identity is actually service principle but managed. So very less chances of uh, risk exposure. Then we have uh, privileged identity management and defender for cloud. We already know these are huge topics and we have already discussed many times. So let's talk about some important points in next slide, starting from PIM. Azure AD privileged identity management is an additional paid offering that provides oversight of role assignment, self-service, and just-in-time uh, role activation. With Azure AD PIM service, we can manage, control, and monitor access to important resources in our organization. Organizations can give users just-in-time privileged access to Azure resources and Azure AD. Oversight is needed you should know what is happening and who is getting enrolled for these privileged roles or uh, activating these previous roles. For what those users do with that roles or those administrative privileges. PIM helps mitigate the risk of excessive, unnecessary or misused access rights. Here are some features that you see on the on the slide, which I have consolidated because we have already talked many times about these features. So let's summarize these. PIM gives us just-in-time privileged access to Azure AD and Azure resources as well. It gives the assignment time bound assigning time-bound access to resources by using start and at end dates and the time. Uh, even the person who is uh, requesting for that, that, that access can choose or maximize or minimize the time. We can have the maximum time given to that particular administrative privilege. And we can make the people eligible and require approval to activate the privileged roles. Multi-factor authentication could be enforced to activate any role using justification to understand why user activating privileged 
roles, getting notifications when privileged roles are activated, conducting access reviews to ensure that users still need roles, and downloading an audit history for an internal or an external audit. To use PIM, to use PIM, we need Azure AD Premium P2 license, or it could be Enterprise Mobility Plus Security E5, EMS E5. So this is a brief summary about PIM, and now Defender for Cloud. Defender for Cloud has many features which will help us to secure our infrastructure. For the very first is harden the configuration. Assigning security initiatives to subscription and reviewing the secure score leads to the hardening recommendation built into the Defender for Cloud. Defender for Cloud periodically analyzes the compliance status of resources to identify potential security misconfigurations and weaknesses. It then provides recommendations on how to remediate those issues. Also gives you the steps. You can click and fix it, that simple. With the security, uh, secure score and recommendation, it also gives some advanced capabilities like just in time uh, for virtual machine just-in-time virtual machine access. As with all cybersecurity prevention techniques, our goal should be to reduce the attack surface area. In this case, that means having fewer open ports, especially management ports like RDP or SSH. But our legitimate users also use these ports, so it's not practical to keep them closed permanently. Hence, JIT, just in time. With JIT, you can lock down the inbound traffic to your virtual machines, reducing exposure to attacks while providing easy access to connect to VMs when needed, time bound. It works on the NSGs though. Then we have Adaptive network hardening. Adaptive network hardening is an agentless feature of Defender for Cloud. Nothing needs to be installed on your machines to benefit from this network hardening tool. Then how it exactly works? Well, it works with NSGs because Applying NSG to filter traffic to and from resources improves our network security posture. That's how we do it. However, there can still be some cases in which the actual traffic flowing through the NSG is a subset of the NSG rules defined. In these cases, further improving the security posture can be achieved by hardening the NSG rules based on the actual traffic patterns. So this network hardening is done on the NSG. It gathers the information and gives you the recommendation to harden your NSG rules. Then we have application controls. It's a wonderful feature. Adaptive application controls are an intelligent and automated solution for defining allow list of known safe application uh, for your machines. Often organizations have collections of machines that routinely run the same processes. Microsoft Defender for Cloud uses machine learning to analyze the applications running on your machines and create a list of the known safe software. A wonderful example is this, people sometimes use AVD as an uh, jump box solution for users and you could have this uh, adaptive application control enabled so that only RDP will run on those uh, nodes that AVD uses, right? <clears throat> then Microsoft Defender for Cloud security alerts are triggered by advanced detections. 
Defender for Cloud prioritizes and lists the alerts along with the information needed for you to quickly investigate the problem. Defender for Cloud also provides detailed steps to help you remediate the attacks. Then it's time to protect the PaaS services through Defender. As of now, we were only talking about the IA services, but with Defender for Cloud enabled on a subscription and Microsoft Defender for Cloud enabled for all available resource types, you'll have a layer of intelligent threat protection powered by Microsoft Threat Intelligence, protecting resources in Azure Key Vault, Azure Storage, Azure DNS, and other Azure PaaS services. Defender for Cloud's workflow automation feature lets you automate responses to Defender for Cloud triggers. This is a great way to define and respond in an automated, consistent manner when threats are discovered. For example, to notify relevant stakeholders, launch a change management process and apply specific remediation steps when a threat is detected. Now, apart from all these, it has seamless integration with SeamSore solutions like Sentinel and ITSM solution like ServiceNow. And if we talk about Sentinel, Microsoft Sentinel, there are two approaches to ensure your Defender for Cloud data is represented in Microsoft Sentinel. The very first is Sentinel connectors. Microsoft Sentinel includes built-in connectors for Microsoft Defender for Cloud at the subscription and tenant levels. Top level, hierarchy, remember? So we can stream alerts to Microsoft Sentinel at the subscription level or connect all subscriptions in your tenant to Microsoft, Microsoft Sentinel, easy peasy, connectors at the top level. Or stream your audit logs, an alternative way to investigate Defender for Cloud alerts in Microsoft Sentinel is to stream your audit logs into Microsoft Sentinel. You got a good and get into the resources like connect Windows security events, collect data from Linux based source, Linux based sources like sys log, connect data from your activity log. You can do that as well. <clears throat> the point is, Defender for Cloud has a seamless integration with the solutions like advanced security solutions like SIEM security information event management and so security orchestration automated response uh, and ITSM solution to get your incident registered. So with these, uh, these, these all things that we talked about will help us to secure our infrastructure, but that's not it. It's a part of the respective pillars that we, we talked about, like networking, identity, data, infrastructure. So securing with defense in depth, there are multiple layers. So infrastructure has multiple stuff as we talked about at the very beginning when we defined the infrastructure. So these are the some uh, points I have uh, put together to go through securing infrastructure with Azure capabilities, but that's not it. There are other pillars that we already talked about in previous videos and we'll be talking about in upcoming videos. Everything comes together and make your environment secure. But for now, that's all about infrastructure security with Azure capabilities. Thank you for watching and you guys have a good day. Bye.